we heard this stuff. We were locked down in the adjustment center in San Quentin. And all this stuff hit the media. And we just couldn't believe it. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're looking at 10 notorious kidnappings in American history. Donna's dreams were within reach. But nothing could have prepared her or any of us for the nightmare, the darkness she suddenly faced. For this list, we're looking at the most infamous abductions throughout U.S. history. Which of these kidnappings had you never heard about before? Let us know in the comments. Ariel Castro kidnappings. Suddenly, a red car pulls up the driver. It's a familiar face. And Amanda realized that this was Ariel Castro and she knew his daughter. The horrifying crimes of Ariel Castro rocked Cleveland, Ohio, and the rest of America when they came to light. Castro had orchestrated the kidnappings of Michelle Knight, Amanda Berry, and Georgina De Jesus between 2002 and 2004. For about a decade, the three ladies remained locked up in Castro's home, where they lived under terrible conditions. On the left side of the frame is a support pole. Um, that's a pole that we've come to understand that the women were restrained to. In that time, the case became national news, even getting featured on America's Most Wanted. It remained unsolved until 2013, when Barry escaped from the house with her daughter and was able to lead police back there. Can you imagine that the baby was born on Christmas Day? And it turned out to be the gift that got them out of the house. Castro was arrested and sentenced to life imprisonment, but he took his own life one month later. The 1976 Chowchilla kidnapping. They're here is where I was sitting at the time when they come up on the on the on the bus with the, with guns. It was the largest kidnapping for ransom in American history. On July 15th, 1976, 26 school children from Chowchilla, California, were abducted alongside their bus driver Frank Edward Ray. The perpetrators drove them out to a quarry, where they were held in a truck buried underground. By this time, the kids' parents had inundated the police with so many calls that the lines were jammed and the kidnappers were unable to phone in with their ransom. The kidnappers, all from wealthy families, planned their sinister plot for 18 months, inspired by this scene in the Clint Eastwood classic, Dirty Harry. Where? Just get started. Over the next 16 hours, Ray and the older children maneuvered their way out of the truck to their freedom. They were eventually reunited with their families. All three kidnappers were captured by police and sentenced to life, but were eventually all paroled. Linda Carrero, La Bandera, and three of her sisters were among the hostages. She can't believe James Schoenfeld is now free. Charlie Ross. In 1874, the young Charlie Ross was living with his family in an affluent neighborhood in Philadelphia. On July 1st, Charlie and his brother Walter were in front of their house when they were picked up by two men who lured them with the promise of candy and fireworks. Walter was later dropped off by the men, while Charlie was never seen or heard from again. The kidnappers demanded a $20,000 ransom, which Charlie's father was unable to pay. The case eventually became headline news as it was America's first known kidnapping for ransom. 60 years later, a man named Gustav Blair came forward claiming to be Charlie, but he was never accepted by the Ross family. Bobby Dunbar. Backstory, 109 years ago, four-year-old Bobby Dunbar, son of Leslie and C.P. Dunbar of Opelousas, wandered away from a family outing near Lake Swayze in St. Landry Parish. Born to Lessie and Percy Dunbar, Bobby Dunbar was a four-year-old boy who went missing in 1912 while on a Louisiana fishing trip with his family. For eight months, police searched all over the country, and the case attracted significant media attention. It all took a bizarre turn when it was reported that Dunbar had been found with a man named William Walters in Mississippi. The city of Opolis is through a party, but that party didn't last long. But according to Walters, the boy with him was actually Bruce Anderson, the son of Julia Anderson, a field hand of the Walters family. Notwithstanding, a court ruled that the boy belonged to the Dunbars, and Walters was later sent to prison for kidnapping him. Decades later, DNA testing proved that the boy was, in fact, not Bobby Dunbar. Elizabeth Smart. I needed to learn to be okay with my new life, and that was, you know, that took time, and that, I mean, it didn't just happen overnight. On June 5, 2002, a young Elizabeth Smart was kidnapped from her home in the middle of the night by Brian David Mitchell. Mitchell took Smart to a camp in the woods, where he and his wife, Wanda Barzee, kept her imprisoned for nine months. 
Smart's name and face were plastered all over the news. And at one time, about 2,000 volunteers searched for her every day. I knew it was him once I saw the face because it was the same expression I had seen on the pictures on the television. After a drawing of Mitchell appeared on TV, he was eventually spotted and reported to police. Smart was rescued and reunited with her family on March 12, 2003. Since then, she has played an instrumental role in the passing of legislation to promote child safety. The chilling part is that if she hadn't gotten found, I think four years later, it's pretty obvious she'd, she'd be part of that family and part of that compound. Amber Hagerman. For those first five terrible days, their daughter became everyone's little girl. The 1996 kidnapping and subsequent death of Arlington, Texas girl Amber Hagerman remains one of the most notable unsolved cases in the state. On the 13th of January that year, Hagerman was abducted from the parking lot of an abandoned grocery store by an unknown man in a black truck. A witnessing neighbor quickly drew the attention of police, media, and Hagerman's parents, all of whom began searching for the young girl. Until we got the final word. That weight was the worst weight I ever had in my life. Sadly, her lifeless body was found four days later in a nearby creek. The case led directly to the development of a nationwide system that can quickly alert people if an abduction occurs. It's called America's Missing Broadcast Emergency Response, or the Amber Alert. I still have a hole in my heart for her, and, and I wish I could hear her voice just one more time. Frank Sinatra Jr. Frank Sinatra Jr., the son of the legendary singer and actor, was just starting his own music career when he was kidnapped on December 8, 1963. That night, two men named Barry Keenan and Joe Amsler abducted Sinatra Jr. from his dressing room at Harrah's Lake Tahoe Hotel in Nevada. John Irwin, a third conspirator, placed a call to Sinatra Sr. and demanded a $240,000 ransom. The famed entertainer actually offered him a million, but Irwin declined and stuck to his demands. Sinatra Jr. was released after the ransom was paid, but his kidnappers barely had time to spend their ill-gotten wealth. They were soon captured by authorities and given lengthy prison sentences, although they all secured early releases. John Paul Getty III. As the rich old man received his congratulations, no one could know that on becoming 80, Getty was about to enter the most terrible year of his life. The kidnapping of John Paul Getty III made international headlines because the then 16-year-old was no average teenager. In fact, he was the grandson of J. Paul Getty, who at one time was the world's richest private citizen. Getty III was abducted off the famous Piazza Farnese in Rome by the Indrangheta, an Italian crime syndicate. While the kidnapping itself became news, what actually made this case a media sensation was the senior Getty's adamant refusal to pay the ransom. I have 14 grandchildren. If I start paying ransoms, I'll have 14 kidnapped grandchildren. After four months in captivity, Getty III's ear was mailed to a newspaper organization. This prompted his billionaire grandfather to cough up $2.2 million, the most he could deduct from his taxes. One thing, if a um, man is going to make success, he um, has to um, start with something that's possible for him to do. Patty Hearst. The national uh, media immediately focused on it as a, as a kidnapping case and then understood, you know, the revolutionary aspects of it. Born into the affluent Hearst publishing family, Patty Hearst was a 19-year-old college sophomore when she was kidnapped from her apartment in February 1974. The perpetrators were a far-left radical group called the Symbionese Liberation Army. Two months later, the group released a tape in which Hearst called herself Tanya and declared that she had joined their ranks. I've been given the name Tanya after a comrade who fought alongside Che in Bolivia. It is in the spirit of Tanya that I say, Patria Muerte, venceremos. That same month, she was captured on surveillance footage participating in a bank robbery. After being an accomplice in other crimes, Hearst was apprehended in San Francisco alongside another member of the SLA. Despite claiming to have been brainwashed by the group, Hearst was sentenced to seven years in prison. She was eventually pardoned by former President Bill Clinton. For those people who still believe that I'm brainwashed or dead, I see no reason to further defend my position. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. 
If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Charles Lindbergh Jr. This is the first ransom note that was left in the nursery. We warn you for making any ding public or for notify the police. Widely regarded as the crime of the century, the little Charles Lindbergh Jr. was abducted from his parents' home on March 1, 1932. A ransom note demanding $50,000 was found that night. In the next few days, the child's parents, famed aviators Charles and Anne Morrow Lindbergh, received more ransom letters which increased the demand to $70,000. Eventually, the Lindberghs were able to pay the ransom, but their son never returned home. Most of the history of kidnapping, uh, certainly up to that point, was about police incompetence and the inability of most police to bring children who had been ransomed back. His body was found in a shallow grave on May 12, 1932. A rigorous investigation led police Police to Bruno Richard Helpman, who was arrested and charged with kidnap and murder. The ensuing trial took the media by storm and ended in Helpman being sentenced to death. We find the defendant, Bruno Richard Helpman, guilty of murder in the first degree. <laughs> so, so say you all. So say we all. Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.